Okay, so in this playlist of videos, we're going to be looking at estimations. And the first kind of estimation that we are going to do is where we do some rounding to one significant figure. So I've written here that rounding can help us to estimate answers to calculations. We usually round numbers to one significant figure, which I'll write as 1SF, to make the calculations easier. And actually rounding is something that's really useful in real life because you might just, or estimations, you might just want to get a rough size of an answer rather than the exact answer. And so people tend to use estimations quite a lot um, as a quick way of figuring out how much something will cost or how long something will take. So we're going to do a quick recap in this first part of this video. We're going to round these to one significant figure. So what you do is you draw a line after the first significant figure to help you decide whether it's going to round up or stay the same. Now we have a zero here, so it's actually just going to stay the same. It is just going to round to the number 100. Because it's to one significant figure, we're saying, is it closer to 100 or to 200? Now I've got 31,241.6. I'm going to draw a line after the first significant figure, which is the three. And we're going to decide whether that one is going to make it round up to a 30,000 or, uh, sorry, round to a 30,000 or to a 40,000. And it's closer to 30,000. 9.32, so we'll draw that line there. The three here means it's gonna just stay as a nine. It's not gonna round up to a 10, so it's just gonna round to a nine. Now this is where things change a little bit. You might think that the first significant figure is a zero, but we don't include the zero at the beginning of a number as a significant figure. So we're drawing it after the four. Now this time, the nine means that the four is going to round up. So to one significant figure, this is 0.5. Again, the 0 and the 0 don't count as significant, so we'll draw the line after the 7, and the 2 means it's going to stay as 0 0.07. Okay, this one that we've got here, the first significant figure is a 9, and this 9 here is actually going to want to make this 9 round up to a 10, and of course we've still got two numbers afterwards, so it's going to be 1,000. And just double check it makes sense, 995 can be rounded to 1,000, because it's closer to 1,000 than it is to 900. So the significant figure in this video is going to be, in this video, in this question, is going to be the 2, that's the first significant figure, and that 6 is going to make it round up to 0 0.003. You can have negatives as well, so I'm going to draw the line after this 1, and the 5 is going to make that 1 round to a 2, so it's actually minus 200 that it is closest to. Although it's somewhere in between minus 100 and minus 200, it's actually closer to 200. And then our last one, our 890,014, I'll draw the line after the eight. This nine is gonna make the eight round up. So it's gonna be nine, zero, 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 zero. It is closer to 900,000 than it is to 800,000. Now, because all of these have been to one significant figure, you will notice that the answers all have just one number or one non-zero digit, and then the rest of the digits are all zero. So let's use rounding to one significant figure to help us do some calculation estimates. So I've written here that to estimate an answer to a calculation, we usually first round all the numbers to one significant figure. And you may do further rounding if required, because you're not trying to get the perfect answer, you're just trying to get the rough idea of the answer. Now we're going to find in this keyword estimate, if you see estimate in a question, it usually means to do some kind of rounding. It doesn't always mean that, but most of the time it will be that. Alternative words to estimate that you may see is you may see the word approximate. So if it's said to approximate the value of this, that would also work as well. Now I'm going to use this, instead of using an equal sign, I'm going to use a different version of the equal sign, which means is approximately equal to. They're like two kinds of waves that we've got there. So I'm going to start off by looking at the 29.8, and that 9 is going to mean that this is going to round closer to 30. So I'm going to do 30 multiplied by 4.9 to one significant figure is just closest to 5. So I'm going to do 30 multiplied by 5 squared, and then I can approximately say that this is equal to 30 multiplied by 25, and that's a pretty easy one to calculate. You can just do the 3 times the 25, which is 75, and then add on the extra zero. So we think approximately this is going to be equal to 750. Let's actually have a look at the real answer. Let's do 29.8 multiplied by 4.9 squared, and it's 715.498. So our answer is 750. As an approximate answer, it's not bad. It's still in pretty close, and it's still in the 700s. Okay, let's have a look at this one that we've got here. The 192 is going to round to a 200. The 584 is closer to 600 for one significant figure. 
and the denominator 0.492, that 9 is going to make that 4 round up to 0.5. So we have on the numerator 200 plus 600 is 800 divided by 0.5. Now usually when people get this wrong they go, oh it's just going to be 400 because I'm doing 800 and I'm going to be multiplying it by 0.5. But this is completely wrong, this doesn't work. So what we can do instead is if we want to get rid of the decimal on the bottom, I can either double it to make it become one or I could times it by 10. But if I multiply the top and bottom by two, which you can do with these fractions, I would get 1,600 on the numerator and the denominator is just one. So it's just 1,600 divided by one and it's 1,600. Now all these equal signs that I've been using here, if you don't want to do them in that form, you can actually after you've done the first one, you can switch to these if you want to. It doesn't really make a difference, but this first one here is quite important. So I'm going to leave it this way, it doesn't really make a difference which way you want to do it. Okay, let's check our answer for this one. So it is 192 plus 584 divided by 0.492 and the answer is 1577 point blah 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 blah. Actually, that's pretty close to 1,600, so our approximate answer seems to be pretty good there. Okay, we're going to have a look at one more question. The 959 is approximately going to be equal to, well, it's either closer to 900 or 1,000, and it's closer to 1,000. And then 1,989, that's either going to be 1,000 or 2,000, and yep, I think it's going to be 2,000, and the denominator is going to be 50, it's closer to 50. So you may notice this trick before, if you want to take this fraction to simplify this fraction, you can just divide the top and bottom by 10. Then all I really need to do is work out 200 divided by 5. Now 200 divided by 5, I guess you could divide it by 10 and then double it, but 200 divided by 5 is going to be 40. So I just have 1000 plus 40, so my approximate answer is 1040. So here are the ones that I have as my approximate answers. Let's check and see whether this one is close. So we're going to do 959 plus a fraction, 1989 over 54, and we get 995.83, and we've got 1040. So you know what? It's actually not too far off. Yeah, maybe it's not as close as some of the other ones, but it's roughly the right size. Sometimes it can be better to round to more convenient values, though. For example, if it's square numbers or you want to round it to convenient multiples just to make something simplify instead. So if I wanted to estimate 138, the square root of 138, I'm probably not going to round it to the square root of 100. I could round it to the square root of 100, but there's a better one that I could round it to that might give me a better answer. Can you think of a square number that is close to 138? Well, I think the one that's closest is 144, and the square root of 144 is 12. So I think the square root of 138 is going to be roughly 12. Let's have a look. Let's do the square root of 138, and it's 11.7, so it's actually a pretty good estimate. We've got quite close there. Now, we're going to try and do the cube root of 8.5. Now, I'm going to change 8.5. I could do it to 9, but actually we're trying to think of cube numbers here. So a cube root of 8.5. I'm actually going to instead find the cube root of 8. When we're finding the cube root of 8, we're thinking of what number, when we multiply it by itself three times, will give us 8. And the answer is 2. So we can say that this one is going to be approximately equal to 2. It's in fact going to be a little bit bigger than 2 because 8.5 is bigger than 2. So I'm going to do the cube root of 8, not 8, but 8.5, and it's a little bit bigger than 2, it's 2.04. Okay, let's have a think about some estimates for this one. Well, let's start off by looking at the denominator, because division is a bit tricky. You want to think about what am I dividing by. 6.95 is close to 7. Now, if I did the numerator to 200, 200 divided by 7 isn't that easy. So instead of doing one significant figure for the numerator, I could do two significant figures, because, I'm hoping you'll notice, 21 can easily be divided by 7. So if I round this instead of to 200, I'm going to conveniently do it 
to 210, I get a really nice division that can happen there. So this is what I mean by a convenient multiple. Instead of writing 200, I'm like, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna put 210, it's close to that, and it will allow me to do this division. So 21 divided by seven is three, and so 210 divided by seven is going to be 30. So approximately, we think the estimate of this answer of 213.57 divided by 6.95 we said it was about 30, and the real, real answer is 30.729, so we're really, really close with that one. Okay, last one with this estimation that we've got here. I am going to, again, think about what the denominator might round to. So the denominator is going to be close to 6, and then I might want to think about what this top number could be that would help me do a division. Well, maybe I could actually just round the top number to something that I know could be divided by 6. I'm actually just going to round it to 150. I might need to do a bit of a calculation to figure out six, 150 divided by 6. So it goes into 15 twice with 3 left over, and it goes into 30 five times. So actually, 150 divided by 6 is approximately equal to the square root of 25. Not approximately equal to, it is equal to the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So let's just see if that's going to be close to the true answer. I'm going to do the square root of 152 over 5.92. And it's 5.067, which is really close to what we went for our answer here. So these last ones that I've got are just to say, you don't always have to do it to one significant figure. You can do it to a number that just makes it convenient for your calculations. So you have got a few questions that I want you to have um, a go at. You might get some different answers to me, and that's because in an exam, there will be an accepted range of answers to these questions. So pause the video and have a go at these questions, and I'm gonna go through them in just a second. Okay, so this first one, I'm gonna do the approximate sign. I'm gonna do the, that as a 200, that as a four, and that as a 900. 200 divided by four is 50, and when I add the 900, I'm going to get 950 for my approximate answer. You can check it on the calculator to see if it is close. So 119 for a square root, I want to think of a square number that is close to it, and it's 121. The square root of 121 is 11, so a square root of 119 is approximately 11. We're now going to think of a cube number which is close to 30, and it's actually going to be 27. The cube root of 27 is 3, so the cube root of 30 is approximately going to be 3. So for this one we've got here, for the numerator, I'm going to try it out with the square root of 4 multiplied by 16, and on the denominator, 2 squared. Okay, well, 4 times 16, when you calculate that, is 64, and 2 squared is 4. The square root of 64 is 8, so I'm doing 8 divided by 4, and I think that my estimated answer to that is going to be 2. For E, 405 is close to 400, and 0.2 uh, is close to 400, why did I write 405? And 0.21 is close to 0.2. Now because I want there to be a 1 on the bottom, if I times it by 5 here and 5 here, 400 times 5 is 2000, so that is 2000 divided by 0.2 times 5, which is 1. So this division is a bit tricky. This division is really easy. 2,000 divided by 1 is just 2,000. This one that we have here, 10,095 is close to 10,000, 990 is close to 1,000, and 89 is close to 90. This division, 10,000 divided by 1,000, is just 10, and 10 plus 90 is 100. And then for G, the last one that we've got here, I've just realized that should be our little wiggly sign. I'm going to do my 12 plus 8 squared divided by 20. So 12 plus 8 is 20. So that's 20 squared divided by 20. 20 squared, you could either work that out, which is 400 and divide it by 20. But if you are doing 20 squared and then dividing it by 20, you're just going to get left with the number 20. Now, as I said, in an exam, there would be an accepted range of answers. So if you didn't get exactly my numbers that you've got here, but you've got something close, consider yourself correct. So in the next video, we're going to do some exam style questions on estimation. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel? If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. 
And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.